If you have one of these robot vacuums, you know that in the past few years, the price has gone down significantly. We never would have had an extravagant extra thing like this had it not been a good price. And I think we actually got it as a gift. We've had this for quite a few years, and once you make the investment, I know you want it to keep cleaning as well and as efficiently as it does the first time you plug it in for the lifetime of the vacuum. It'd also be nice if it would last a long, long time. Well, today I have some tips and tricks to show you how to keep it running in tip-top condition so that your floors will stay nice and clean even if you have multiple animals like us. We have two beagles, a chihuahua, two cats, five ducklings, and it's still cleaning strong. So let's get to it. Hi everybody, welcome back to Sawdust and Cornbread. My name is Laura Lee. If you're a first time guest here today, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I put out new content every week. We're going to start out by looking at some of the basic components and things that come with these vacuums. Of course, you have the vacuum unit itself. And if you flip it over, that's where you're going to find all of the moving parts. This is where all of our maintenance is going to take place. And we'll be focusing on that in just a minute. Now, along with these vacuums, they usually give you some really helpful tools, and I strongly encourage you to make use of these. I typically use mine just about every time I vacuum, and you may say, well, that's just a hassle, the vacuum's there to make it easier. Well, it takes a few minutes, but it has made the vacuum last a lot longer and work a lot better. The first tool that came with my vacuum is this neat little guy, it has like uh, almost like a comb on this side and a brush on this side and the most helpful part right here there is a blade it's almost it kind of looks like what you would use to open mail with the uh, the little blade that you open envelopes with in the mail and I have been known to use it for that I shouldn't because it dulls it but you're gonna see in a minute how helpful this tool is and if your robotic vacuum didn't come with this I strongly encourage you to look on Amazon and other places and see if you can find something similar. If not, you may be able to use a mail opener or one of those slidey tools that you cut wrapping paper with. And then a brush. These you can get, I know, at beauty supply shops because they have something similar for you to use to clean out your clipper blades. So you could find those at BD supply shops. And then you could just use a wide toothed comb if you can't find a tool similar to this. But it's very helpful. Also, usually along with these vacuum units, they give you some extra parts. So when the first ones wear out, you always have extra parts, at least one set to replace them with. These are the little spinning brushes that go underneath that help get the corners and things like that. Funny thing is, with the trick I'm gonna show you today, you probably aren't gonna need these for several years. I think in the manual it suggested that we replace these every three to six months. I have yet to replace mine because I haven't needed to and I've had this unit for several years, at least three years. So I still have these brand new replacement parts. If I ever do have to use these, I can order more, but why use them up if I can make what I have last a lot longer, right? Obviously, this is the top of the unit. You can see the button controls that come on here that indicates that it's charging, spinning, or you can just make it go, and that would be the top part of it. And also, up here at the top, there is an indicator for Wi-Fi because this one is operated by Wi-Fi. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over so that we can take a look at the bottom. Before we do anything else, be sure to switch that switch to off so the machine doesn't accidentally come on while we're working on it. Now the first thing we're going to focus on are these two side spinners and if you grab a hold of the bristles firmly and pull it straight out it pops right off so that you can work on those. Now keep in mind and remember which side you pull which spinner blade off of. 
Not because we're going to put them back on the same side, but we're going to do the opposite. Just like you rotate your tires, we're going to switch these spinners each time we service our little robot. That way they wear more evenly, just like you do with tires. When they spin around and hit the wall, you want it to hit different locations. And the best way to make sure that they wear evenly is to switch those out and rotate them each time. So just make a note of which one comes off of which side. Now that we have these free from the machine, we can use the comb edge of our little tool or you can use a wide tooth comb to go through those pr bristles and remove all the excess hair and dust and debris that's caught in there. I also take my fingers and use them just to kind of straighten up those bristles. That way they'll do a more effective job. With all of them all cleaned up and the bristles straightened, I can go ahead and switch them out in the opposite hole than they were before. Once you pull the machine closer, you'll see that there is a little square piece that extends out from the machine that fits right into the square hole in the little side spinners. You just press it a little bit and it pops right into place. So I'm gonna put the other one on here and those are ready to go. And they're gonna work a lot better than they would have when they were dirty and bent. Now we're gonna focus on the center pivoting wheel mechanism. This is one of the most important things for you to maintain and keep clean. The surface of it has kind of a grippy texture so that it doesn't slide around on the floor. It's rubbery. If that gets coated with stuff, it's gonna slide around and skid and not work as effectively. Also, if you look on the sides, there's quite a bit of hair and debris that gets wound around the pin that goes through the center. And when that hair gets sucked in there and wound around, it causes that wheel to drag and it will drain the battery very quickly. So you won't get as much cleaning time out of your row by back. So the next thing we're gonna do is make sure that we get rid of that hair. You need some pliers with a good grip that will fit in there and you just pop it straight out. With the pivoting wheel removed, you can really see what I'm talking about. If you have any pets or females in your house, I guarantee yours looks the same, so you really need to do this. Just make sure you have pliers that are wide enough to fit on that wheel with a good grip. Pinch it on there and pull it straight out. In the center, there is a little pin. I'm sorry, I got a little bit out of frame here. But there's a pin that goes through the center of that wheel and holds it in place. You can pull that pin straight out. It's not attached and remove all of that hair and lint and gunk that's stuck on the pin. Just take it right out and then you can use your fingers to pull it off of the pin. Get that pin nice and clean that way there's nothing clogging it up and it'll be able to spin freely. That's going to save your battery life and make your Robovac much more effective in turning and getting all of the little nooks and crannies in your floor. Check the wheel because a lot of times there's still some hair stuck in the wheel itself and you can just pull that right out and it'll be good to go. It's also a good idea to go ahead and clean that wheel with a little water and detergent or Clorox wipe while you have it off just to maintain that good grippy rubber surface. Then simply insert the little pin in there and it slides right back down into its compartment. Give it a little pop and it goes right in. Now it can move freely, no binding. See how nice that wheel spins. That's the way you want it to be for your machine to work much more effectively and efficiently. All right, now we're gonna clean these two little sensors. They're important because they make contact and charge the unit. So you wanna make sure they're nice and clean. Use an alcohol wipe or a little mild detergent and water. Give those a good wiping. Dry them off so that they'll have good contact and you'll get a good charge. Now we'll move on to the beater bar. This is another really important part. You have two little tabs, you just push up on those and the cover lifts off and then you can see the exposed beater bar. There's a square peg side and a round peg side. If you look in there, you can see the round peg side will pull out freely. So pull that side out first, it just slides out a lot easier. 
And what a mess. Everything that is long and hairy gets wrapped around that beater bar. This is where you're really going to appreciate the blade on this little tool or whatever you're using. Slice right through that hair that's wound around the beater bar and then you can just use your fingers and it comes right out. You don't have to fight with it. Comes right off of there or you could also use that comb part of the little tool to pull all that hair off and yeah it's a big mess but once you get that off it's going to clean the floors a lot better then i like to take that comb part and go through the bristles just to get any small little short hairs and lint that may be stuck in there and finish off with the brush part just to get out any extra lint on the ends around those uh, round edges, there's always some hair stuck, so be sure to use your blade on that part as well. Then I like to wipe the little cavity out that the beater bar goes in. While I've got it exposed, might as well clean it. Now we're going to move on to the main heart of the machine, the part that stores all the dust and debris. And I'm going to just push that little button in and slide that out. And again, I'll clean out that cavity while I have it exposed because why not just make it all nice and clean. And now we're going to work on the actual compartment itself. While you're cleaning the cavity, there is a little rubber seal that goes around the suction part. Always clean your seals so that everything will stay nice and tight. Here is the main compartment that holds all of the dust and debris that the vacuum sucks up. You want to make sure you have the right side up, otherwise it's going to dump all over the table. Normally I would do this over a trash can, not on a table. I'm just doing that, of course, to show you. You just press this lever down here, this little button, and see how the top comes down. That allows you to open up the lid so that you can get to the inside of the dust compartment. Once you take a closer look, you'll see there's actually several parts to the dust compartment. There's the main compartment here, and then up here at the top, there's a filter compartment. And as you can see, mine is really clogged up at this point. It's very important to keep that clean because that is where the airflow goes through your vacuum and it kind of sifts the fine dust and particles. So I'm gonna show you how to remove these filters and keep them nice and clean to make your vacuum work more efficiently. Obviously with this first large compartment, I'm just gonna empty that into the trash and then take my cloth and wipe that empty compartment out. I've got the main debris compartment clean. I'm gonna wipe that out a little bit. Flip it around and show you the side that has the filter on it. Of all your robotic vacuum components, this one is probably the most important one to keep clean. You can see how the filters are kind of clogged up. Really fine dust gets sifted through there and it can block the suction. It comes with two little handles. I have broken one of my handles as well as cracked the frame and I could order one of these but it still seems to be working efficiently. I just have to be extra careful. I'm going to put my finger in this loop here and lift up gently. And you can see that there is a rubber seal around here and around this. You want to keep that seal nice and clean, so we're going to be sure to clean that before we're done. First, I'm going to take this fine filter And just turn it around and I would normally do this in the trash but I'm going to empty all of that fine dust out of it. This fine extra fine filter is washable. It feels like it has almost like a silk covering so I'm just going to run warm soapy water over this and then make sure that it dries completely before I replace it. I'm going to set that aside for a minute and show you what else we have here. This is the inner. This is a coarser filter and to get to it, you actually have to flip the compartment around. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And for this one, we slide the door open on this side. When you take it out, pay attention to the order that things are placed in there. So when I lift the door, the first thing I see is this white kind of corrugated filter. And if I lift that up with the little tab underneath, is that more coarse foam filter that we saw inside. We want to make sure when we put it back that we put it back in the correct order. You can gently separate the two. It just peels right off the top. 
And what I like to do is shake out that corrugated filter. You can see all of that fine dust coming out. I also shake that foam coarse filter. You can also use that fine brush to go through it, kind of get in between. Now I'm gonna tell you a little trick that I have learned. Not only can you wash this fine silk filter, you can also hand wash this foam and even this corrugated filter. This one's a little bit trickier. You have to be extra gentle with it. And it doesn't say in the instruction manual you can do this, but I have been able to reuse this for years without ordering a new one. It's like new. All I do is run warm water through that, a little detergent, soap it up and rinse it. The trick is you've got to make sure this is completely dry before you reuse it. All right, you're almost finished. The most complicated parts are over. Now I'm just taking a Clorox wipe and giving the case a good cleaning, making sure that all of those seals have all the dust removed off of them so we have good suction every time we use the vacuum cleaner. You don't have to wash all these parts every single time you use the vacuum. I probably do it every three to six months, but I do use those tools to dust everything out every single cleaning. It just keeps it running better and longer. Now all of my parts are dry, I'm gonna give the base a good wiping and I can begin to reassemble my vacuum. Be sure to wipe off all of the sensors on the side. Usually they look like black glass or plastic. It's important to keep those clean because those protect your unit from dropping downstairs or falling off a ledge. So pretty important to keep those clean. Put your little beater bar back in its compartment using that square peg first. And then remember to put all of your filters back in the same order that you got them out. In my case, the black coarse filter will go in first, followed by that white corrugated filter. And I made sure that's good and dry before I use it or it will accumulate more dust than before. I'm gonna snap that door closed. Flip it over so I can insert that fine, silky filter on the inside. It's a little bit trickier, takes a little patience. Just run your finger along the sides and eventually it will work its way in and snap in. Keep in mind that the unit is upside down, so you're gonna put the little compartment that holds all the dust upside down as well. Turn your unit on and make sure it's fully charged and then you are good to go. I guarantee you that this robotic vacuum is going to clean better than it has in months. You will be amazed what a difference this thorough cleaning and a little maintenance, what it will do for you. Be sure to like this video if it's been helpful and subscribe to the channel. I put out new material every week. This has been Laura Lee. God bless.